There we go. There we go. That's another one. Okay. That's a little bit better one. That's what I'm talking about right there. Look at that. I can't even move this joker. Oh, God. What do we hook? What is up, MFers? Welcome back out to the home stomping ground. Stopping through Nebraska um, for a couple weeks here, actually. And I got the boat with me. I got all the tackle with me. We're on our way to Wheeler Lake for the next Elite Series event uh, here in a couple days. But I thought, you know, why not get out to the old stomping grounds, try to catch some damn fish while we're at it. And so, guess what? That's what we're doing. We're fishing the bank today, guys. I mean, this lake doesn't get deep. It's muddy water. It's got... I don't even know what's in it, honestly. It's been too low to fish and launch a boat for several years, it sounds like, since I've been down in Texas. But we are going to be fishing shallow stuff. I am locking this square bill in my hand, along with the flipping bait. And um, that's basically all I'm going to throw the entire day today. And I'm just not going to live scope or anything. I'm going to bang this thing into shallow cover and see what the hell pulls back this lake's got donks, or at least it did anyways. And we're going to explore it together and learn how to catch some more fish fishing shallow with stuff like this so if you guys like these type of videos you want to see more videos like this where we're not out live scoping offshore we're, we're fishing shallow cover picking it apart and giving you guys some tips please comment down below let me know what you want to see if that's something you want and uh, without further ado let's freaking hop into the video today and hopefully catch something i don't even know what lives here anymore but i'm not going to pass up an opportunity to uh hang out at the the local fishery where i cut my teeth and where you guys have seen a whole lot of videos uh in the past so let's rip some you know what Let's just freaking start right here. We're gonna do it with one of our good old friends, and that's Mr. Gillikin. Look at this son bitch. Then this crankbait's caught a couple fish, been through a little bit. I'm gonna blast this thing around some rip wrap today. We're gonna throw some freaking. We're gonna throw some flipping baits. We're gonna flip some throwing baits. We're gonna do all sorts of stuff and see what wants to pull back. I don't even know if there's bass in this lake anymore. Gonna go ahead and assume there might be, but you know, things didn't probably change that much. The old live scope is on and uh not gonna use it a lot today because we're gonna be fishing less than three or four feet of water i know a lot of people have been wanting those types of videos i personally love using it it's a great tool it's a great uh, addition to everything that we use on a daily basis but i know there's the, the haters out there that don't like it it's cheating but this will be more so for just the people that can't afford it or don't want to get it see if i still remember how to catch one without it right probably not from the comment section Mm, okay, let's go flip. Sun's high. There's zero clouds. It just makes sense. Oh, God. Yep. We're back in Nebraska. We got a butthole mirror carp. Wow. That's how you know. That right there is how you know a some bitch mirror carp. Wow. Beautiful. Freaking reeling my cricket in, and this guy's on there. Snag. Must have live scoped him out there snagging fish on purpose. Just cheating my way through life here. It'd be nice if you'd chill the fuck out. The wind, too. Wow. <laughs> Welcome home. Clearly the wind heard my plan. I was like, I'm gonna flip docks now. I need to be meticulous about my presentations and slow down so I can flip. Because now it's like, okay, perfect. I'm gonna blow 340. I was blowing 300, but now 340 is pretty much where I wanna be. Great wind, thanks. Oh, okay. Now, here we go. There's a freaking Gillikin eater. Just came up and licked it. Come here. Don't be getting away on me now. He's shrinking. He's shrinking. He's shrinking. He's growing. He's shrinking. Come on. Come on, bud. Oh. Be a little careful about flipping him. Look at how he got that bait. Look at how we got that bait. That's what I'm talking about right there. Look at that. Freaking sideways. Shoots it. Four and a half pounder. Yes. I mean, the water is not clean, but this continues to be my favorite color square bill in so many different watercolors. 
this Gillikin color. It's like a green pumpkin colored square bill, which obviously you don't see a lot of green pumpkin crankbaits, but it's also got characteristics of a bluegill, as you guys can see. Little bit of lighter subdued yellow, some bars inside, a little bit of pearlescent blue. Four and a half powder. Sucked her in. Goodbye, bud. Sweet on the board. That was a little riprap fish, so I don't know. Kind of out on the end of a, the point of a, a riprap. A man made riprap point, that is. That's the old Nebraska man made habitats. We don't got the natural stuff. Figured there'd be one at least. There we go. On the corners, on the front, threw down the side, nothing. Boom. Right there on the corner. And that makes sense. There we go. There we go. There's another one. There's another one. Another one shallow cranking. Freaking strong boys in here. I love that. Strong boys in the wind. Another one. Freaking three and a half pounder. Heck yeah. It's kind of skinny. Post spawn. Holy shit. About to put the damn Gillikin in my hand like he had it. <laughs> A little bit skinny but big old head on her came up and slurped that crankbait the biggest thing you're gonna see me doing all day i used to talk about this all the time when i fish these lakes is angles it looks like you're just winding down the bank whatever just randomly catching fish but that's not the case at all if you watch how i'm throwing this square bill every single time i'm getting bit is when it deflects it hits something that's what you got to remember with this bait with any crankbait generally but especially with these little shallow square bills is I'm hitting all different angles. I'm making multiple casts at really juicy spots, which I would say are more like isolated little points that come out, chunkier rock than the rest of the rock around it. Place it with more shade now that the sun's super high. I'm hitting this thing at all different types of angles. And every single time I'm getting a bite, it's giving me a clue where that next one's going to be, whether it be out on the tip of one of these points, tucked up under a dock, on a dock post, on a riprap point, stuff like that big rock chunk rock little tiny shallow rocks on the inside of turns whatever it might be remember where you're getting bit and i'm gonna keep throwing this thing around running into stuff because that's been the deal so far how's it going pretty good what did we do there uh oh We snagged something huge, I think. I can't even move this joker. Oh God, what do we hook? What the world? What in the freaking world did I hook? Okay, I'm highly confused at what's happening right now. Hooked on something massive. And I think it got me snagged. God dang it. That sucks. I was definitely hooked on something huge that was a damn fish, but there's a sunken dock underwater there that it got me underneath there and I had to freaking break them off. I'm pretty positive it's a giant flathead or something that I snagged in the tail. So weird. There we go. There we go. Another one. That world. Oh, it's a little guy. Just a little guy. Once again, third cast on the front of this jetty. Dude, chill. Sorry, first time ever I'm hooking a bass. How do you do? I was here. But yeah, I had to get my angle right. I had to make contact with that rock. And that guy just <laughs> slurped it right off there. But this type of jetty, big enough out here, you know, could be multiple. So let's keep throwing down. I'm going to throw it on the side of it a few times too, but could catch several off it. Okay. Just came up and freaking got it. He's a daggum giant pound and a half 
Oh shoot, might be a pound and three quarters. That's a sawmitch Nebraska stud right there. All right, guys, I'll be honest. The fishing's kind of sucked. We're getting bit strictly on the gillikin, but that's about it. Can't freaking catch them flipping anything, jig, Texas rig. Can't catch them swim jigging, chatter bait, nothing in this freaking grass. This grass sucks ass, by the way. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this lake's full of this fucking grass that grew up when it was down like four feet. And I don't even know what it is. Shit grass, they should call it. It's pretty much made everything substantially more difficult because I think it's just spread the fish out. And it's, this is what it looks like. So for you grass experts, I mean, it's almost like coontail, except it sucks. I don't know, there's no defined edge. Went and looked for the edge out in the middle of the lake. Nothing, just freaking sparse. And then up shallow, it gets all clumpy and shitty and they just can't relate to it. So, I mean, there's still fish on the riprap that's on the inside of it. But as soon as you get any of that grass in there, you stop getting bit, it seems like. So that's great because the majority of the freaking lake has it. I'd rather it be just a muddy shitter and didn't have it. Not that it's any cleaner, hardly. I mean, it's maybe three inches, six inches cleaner visibility because of this grass. It's not even filtering, hardly. And they don't want to relate to it, so that's ideal. But hey, I'll just keep complaining my way through this and keep catching fish and enjoying it. I do know that they are eating this crankbait. I don't hate that. Well, hopefully you guys can hear anything I'm saying and my camera doesn't tip over into the lake because like I keep telling you repeatedly and you keep hearing with the audio being shoddy that uh, the wind's blowing 394. But um, conditions right now, you know, the water is probably a foot and a half visibility, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes up to two feet. Um, nothing too crazy, nothing too muddy, nothing too clean. But like I keep saying, the, the grass has grown in. I think it's just curly pond leaf and it's not it's not good. It's dying off. The fish don't relate to it worth the shit. And so it seems like the more you can get away from it, the more you can fish that shallow, janky, nasty rock dock, broken up old pieces of dock type cover, the better it seems to be. This is the, the combo that I'm going with today. Of course, Crush 50X Gillikin color crankbait. I could probably catch them on chartreuse of some type of chartreuse. I could probably catch them on some other uh, hues of bluegill, but this thing, I just have so much confidence in it. This this bait actually was designed um, on this lake, tested on this lake, a bunch of different variations of this green pumpkin style bluegill pattern with uh, some some subtle chartreuse on the bottom, some, some iridescent um, blue on the, the gills of it and stuff, and of course, some of these bars and a little tiny bit of copper on the sides as well, and this thing just freaking catches them. I switched trebles out of my crank baits and hard baits in general a ton, but for this style of fishing, this power fishing shallow cover with nasty type uh, of rock and dock and stuff like that, I leave these EWGs on there. This is definitely a way to get those fish to the boat, especially with the combo that I'm using. I like to match my hooks up to the way that not only the fish are biting, but the way that I am catching fish um, and the type of rod real line that i'm throwing and I'm, i'll tell you in a second what that is it's it's heavier line than i generally throw on a lot of my crankbaits because of of how i don't know shallow water close combat that i'm really throwing this thing around making those really precise casts and only fishing you know 10 feet of bank at a time or, or, or one specific piece of, of cover at a time so ewgs i think every fish so far that's bit i've landed and probably every fish that'll bite the rest of the day i'll get to the boat i can boat flip them i can horse them in um, which is not something you can do on some really thinner wire uh, or not wide gap style hooks the round bit style um, definitely not not so much those do have their perks but not necessarily right now in the waters you know 75 80 degrees shallow water post spawn to summer power fishing type pattern but uh rod i'm throwing it on again this rod was designed maybe specifically on this lake so much experience and, and thousands of fish caught with this exact model 72 medium heavy mod uh fast action Melican series has a 72 as you guessed it medium heavy heavy bend but it's a slower rod it, it loads up more it lets those fish get this bait a little bit before you start to pull them away from the cover it's not like a super slow action like a composite rod or a glass rod um, because I do like to have the feel of this bait working around that cover to know that it's hitting those rocks perfectly, deflecting off the cover. Um, that I think it's a little bit mushy and you don't feel it so much with that, that uh, slower action taper rod. But 
This one's been perfect for me. I've caught so many fish on it. I love it. Real Daiwa Zillion TW. Um, what is it? The SV TW version, six three to one gear ratio. As you can see, I've had this thing for, for years now. I beat the shit out of it and it performs just like it did on day one. Smooth casting, precise, small. I like a small reel in this when I'm making really light pitches in and around cover. And um, this just gets the job done. Oh, and the, the line I'm using is 16 pound gamma, which if you guys know anything about gamma, it's thicker generally in diameter than most fluorocarbons that uh, are on the market. And so this is some thick line. Once again, I'm not fishing this bait more than four feet of water, which is about what it gets down to um, on this thicker gauge. And I just want the ability to fight these fish, boat flip these fish, get them in the boat with that, uh, that heavier gauge hook. That's my deal on this lake. It works out pretty damn well. And um, I know it'll work out well for you too, if you guys check it out. I'll link it down below if you guys want to check it out. And of course, all these, these items, uh, MF10, will get you a, a discount on them if you want to pick them up for yourself. I'm gonna go back to ripping. There we go. There we go. Oh, what we get? Just freaking slurped it off that grass. There we go. Not a giant one, another two and a half, but. I mean, that's, that's fun. He freaking came up and got, I say off the grass, there's actually a rip wrap on this edge. I can't tell where my camera, right down here. Here, look at this, you can kind of see it. Maybe you can see my screen. There, you can kind of see the rip wrap down the edge there. That's what this stuff is. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I finally got out away from that grass, which I have confirmed is curly pond weed remnants trying to die off if you're from the uh north you're a yank like me then you guys know what this is all about freaking curly pond leaf grows up every year in the spring and for some reason i've been to three different lakes now we've been bluegill fishing me and osborne and uh the stuff freaking overruns your lake and even this lake i've never seen it grown in something with the, the water being down now it's here so it's like if you get away from it you can catch some but they just i mean i've caught fish in it before i've caught fish on the edge of it and around it and sometimes it's good because it can clean up the water and then the offshore fishing gets really good and this lake doesn't get deeper than like i don't know eight nine feet so you don't get bit out there in that stuff very much so it's kind of moot a moot point as far as making the offshore fishing better with cleaning up the water but uh what i'm saying is yeah it sucks on a lake like this where they're shallow and it just causes them to spread out so i found an area that doesn't have it maybe we'll catch a couple more on it more on Okay, that's a little bit better one. There we go. Just slurped it right off the rock. It's like all these bites. Like, they're not just like, boom, freaking getting it. They're just like coming up and slurping off the top of them rocks. It's nice being able to boat flip them too. That's a better one there. That's one of the better ones of the day so far. Oh, that's smart. Retire not, dummy. Good fish, just post spawner so she ain't got much build to her gillikin square bill crush 50 you bet she got the damn concave belly big old head concave belly it's weird because like i'm not gonna say it's full on like shad spawn because talk about having the shad spawn around here around texas and in the south on them flat clay points stuff like that but that don't really exist at all down here we don't like i said we don't have shit for habitats There we go. That one freaking came up and crushed it. Not a big one, once again, but came up and got it. Not a bad one. They're close to three pound fish. Sideways, two hooks with the gillikin. I mean, that's just like 
You see them get it like that? They want it. I felt him freaking eat that thing right off the point of that rock. Once again, what do you know? I made a long cast because I wanted to work all the way through this area hitting them rocks and he just happened to eat it way out on the end. So I'm going to get my angle back in tight here. And the biggest thing is though, guys, like I keep telling you over and over and over, make sure you get in tight. I see so many guys that just go behind them and catch fish where they're just fishing you know, way out and, and, and just not making contact with the rocks more than one or two feet even for their cast. But the difference between your bait hitting like right here on your cast and right here is freaking everything. I mean, you could catch zero fish in a day if your bait is six to inches to two feet off on a cast. Every single fish I've caught today has been right when this little square bill is hitting the piece of cover. Another one. Oh, that's a good one. Eh, not a great one. Oh my god, he freaking swallowed it though. Look at this thing. Another one. Same spot. Came back through it. This fat fish freaking gobbled it. Look how his fish got this bait. Whew, that was a little bit big to freaking boat flip him, but I did anyways. Oh, and the bait came out too. He had it freaking penned sideways. Yeah, he freaking, he gobbled it down there, down the hatch. That's a damn good northern strand, dudes. That is a good one on the Gillikin. Not a huge head, not a huge frame, but look, he's got all that, that belly meat down there. I think he's eating gills up there. Same spot as that one we caught earlier on that seawall freaking thing's got a big old head on him feels nice feels real nice i like that a lot got another one. Oh, another good one too right up in there that's definitely gotta be the deal sitting in there waiting for them fish to come around that seawall with that oh he's got the bait kind of funky but they're sitting there waiting for them food to come around that seawall and just getting it i mean freaking biting it bud that's the third one i've caught that exact same spot now three and a quarter probably Whew. things getting chewed up i love it I freaking love it. That's I mean, it's cool to come back somewhere. You basically designed a bait because you wanted something a little more subtle than what everyone else was throwing. I just go behind people and catch fish on it all the dang time. And you come back here and they freaking gobble it. I'm not sorry. I can't help this love like